Listen up. There's no more excuses. We're empowering those who want the hustle by exposing the status quo. The days of ordinary are over. It's time to crush mediocrity and start discovering your greatest potential. Welcome to the Hustle Nation. 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 Welcome to the Hustle Nation podcast, episode number one. My name is Chris Burns. I am your co-host, and this is my co-host, Dustin McClone. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. Excited to be here. We are excited. It's been a lot of trials and tribulations getting our first (laughs) episode going. And you'd think from a couple of guys that are relatively tech savvy would be able to figure it out. But hey, we're here now. That might be overstated. I'm excited. (laughs) <laughs> All right. So the name of the show is the Hustle Nation podcast. And so often we talk about hustle. I think entrepreneurs and business people and leaders talk about hustle. But the problem is, is what is it? How do you quantify it? And uh, there's a lot of discussion around it. So Dustin, what is hustle? And what is the Hustle Nation podcast? Yeah, no, I mean, hustle to me, I mean, I think you and I have talked about this in the past, you know, hustle is an interesting thing because hustle means similar things to lots of different people, right? But, um, you know, for me, hustle really started uh, a number of years ago. So I'm a a youth basketball coach and I've coached uh, a boys team from third grade all the way up uh, now till eighth grade. And, you know, one of the things about youth sports in my mind is it's it's an interesting microcosm for so many other things in business and in life that, you know, in many ways as a coach, you learn more as a coach than probably you do as a player at times. And, you know, one of the things that it was kind of a light bulb moment uh, for me, this was an, a number of years ago. Uh, my wife, who's uh, also a youth basketball coach, uh, you know, we were talking about kind of two different things. You know, one was at that time, I had just become the the leader of our organization, uh, McClone Insurance and, uh, you know, great organization, uh, you know, uh, third generation, a lot of success, but we had kind of become stagnant. And at the same time, we're talking about our youth basketball team and how do we get more out of these kids and how do we get them engaged and things like that. And, you know, we're both coaches, right? So we talked a lot about, well, we just got to get them to hustle. We got to get them to hustle. And all of a sudden I started thinking, I'm like, well, what if, what if from an organizational perspective as a leadership perspective, our team would hustle, right? And, and hustle more and, and buy into that. What does that look like? And as we started talking about, we realized, you know, similar with, with youth basketball teams, you know, what hustle means, something means something different to everybody and everybody meet. Okay. They see it's hard work. They see there's some sacrifice, things like that. But beyond that, you know, you would have these kids that you'd say, well, you got to hustle. And they're like, well, I am hustling. I think I am hustling. And it wasn't until you started to define what the behaviors actually were for hustle that they actually started to then change their behavior and truly hustle, right? Because they just didn't know. In their mind, it was, I'm working harder than I have, so so I'm hustling. And so that was really kind of where hustle, kind of the concept of what if what if hustle from a business perspective and leadership perspective uh, was more defined? Like what are really those behaviors that we can we can elicit from you know, many people before us that have shown us the way in many ways. And so, you know, hustle really started from that standpoint and and then spent a number of years, you know, really just kind of building out, you know, what hustle really is. And so, uh, you know, now hustle is really more of an acronym uh, that stands for, you know, hard work, unrelenting, smarter, not just harder, take chances, learn from others and enjoy the process. And then under each one of those, you know, are kind of a North Star we can all go to that, are good ways to kind of remind ourselves of, am I really hustling? Am I, and, and, you know, many ways like, you know, we've talked about even this podcast, right. Uh, you know, for any of anybody out there that has started a podcast, right. It, you don't just start it like that, right. There's, there's things you got to learn and there's, you know, plenty of ways where someone could just quit along the way, but you know, hustle is about, you know, part of it is never given up. Yeah, you're, you're right. And we have a definition for it. We have, there's so much more to hustle that we're going to talk about. And, you know, you mentioned defining it. So, you know, as you were talking, I went to dictionary.com and I said, I, I'm curious. I think I could define it, but it would be different than what Merriman Webster and other organizations have. There are several variations of it, but it says to proceed or work rapidly or energetically or, mm-hmm. or a lot of ors. Kind of yeah. hard to define this. It also says um, 
to ener- uh, energetic activity as in work. Okay, yeah. well, energetic activity could just be playing football, playing basketball at any level. It could be working almost at any level. Um, to push or force one's way, jostle or shove. Um, now, I don't know. We, we don't want to encourage we people do more to jostle shoving. or shove anyone yeah. in the workplace. Yeah. But, you know, you, you're right. You read enough of these and you get it. You go to any place and you get it. But what does that mean for, for business? And so I think so often we say that, and I, I've been around coaching youth soccer, youth football, golf, whatever. And I catch myself saying that, hustle, hustle. Okay, well, you know, if you're a 14-year-old kid playing – you know, ninth grade football, or you're like in my daughter's case, you're playing second grade soccer. They're probably like, dad, what, what, I don't even know what the word hustle is, let alone, what am I supposed to do when you say that? So is it run faster? But as you've talked about, alluded to, um, so what if I do run faster in soccer? So what if I do work faster at work? I don't know that that necessarily equates to greater output, greater outcomes, and so that's why I think that that hustle acronym you just shared is really so important. For sure. And, and you know, at the end of the day, you're right. I mean, hustle is an interesting thing because at the end of the day, it is about results, right? I mean, at some point people can hustle all day long, but if they hustle and don't achieve anything, you know, what have you really done? But one of the things we've seen is once you define it, you know, we, you see it with sports, you see it in business, those, those teams or organizations that have that hustle mentality and have defined it and then really have embraced it. They just achieve better, right? I mean, you know, we've seen it time and time again. I mean, hustle will beat, you know, talent and intelligence all day long, all day long, right? Equal teams can, can supersede through that hustle, through that culture. And that was the other thing that was interesting to me. And, and, you know, it's a bit of a light bulb, right? When you start thinking about the mindsets around hustle, you know, they're contagious, right? People and in business, we talk a lot about culture and mindsets and things like that. And they're, they're pervasive, positive or negative, right? You know, I mean, hustle can spread in your organization, but you know, apathy could too, apathy and negative negativity and things like that. And so it's really about, you know, as, as leaders, how, how do we define that so that, you know, what our culture is and what our mindset and what kind of spreads in our organization, we can define and then we can support and encourage because it, at the end of the day, it's all about behaviors so that, you know, because everyone defines it differently. To your point with, with sports, if I'm, you know, running faster down the field, well, that's great, but you're running in the wrong direction, right? So, <laughs> you know, you just scored for the other team. Congratulations, right? So it, it's, you know, getting that definition out there and then and embracing that organizationally. I, I think that's really important that you mentioned the word define because so often in business, in entrepreneurship, whatever it might be, coaching, we don't often take time to define it. We, we take for granted sometimes that, so I come from a very strong marketing background. So when I start talking about SEO and website optimization and page speed, um, people say, well, slow down there, big fella. I, I don't know what that means. It sounds great, but you know, what, what are we talking about? And so I think defining something is, is really so important and then setting the expectation. So I I always, I, I I go back to many times when I was younger hearing, you know um, it's the do, as I say, not as I do, but you you really need to, as a leader, you need to demonstrate. And like anything, um, if you have a great attitude, a great mindset, those things are contagious. And in, in a way that people want to emulate that and they will emulate that because, uh, we're always excited to see uh, the mo- most jovial person we know walk in the room. They, it just has this um, contagious feeling. And so I, I think setting that example, but defining it before you can set it is, is just so important. Yeah, absolutely. And then, and then finding ways to, to recognize it, reward it. Right. I mean, I, I always use the example, I, you'd be in a basketball game and one a kid would dive for a ball out of bounds. Well, when another kid sees someone else do that on the team, are they more or less likely to do it themselves? They're, they're clearly more likely to do it because now they've seen someone do it. And so, you know, you know, me as a coach, me diving up, you know, on the floor might not be the right way to do it, but, you know, certainly as leaders, we can, and, and to be, you know, side by side with our team and, and showing this is what hustle really looks like. Yeah. Well, it, it's funny you mentioned that. And I, I think I'd love to kind of share my example of what I think hustle is and, 
I don't know that it's really a definition, but I go back to exactly that playing youth sports. I was never the best, the biggest, the fastest, the strongest, but at times the reason I played was because of my hustle and because of my energy. And I, whether I was tired or not, I always brought it because I wanted to play. I didn't get to play a lot. And I knew the only way I'd get out there is if I would hustle. And then every once in a while, the coach would say, look at that guy hustle. Everybody be more like Chris. And it wasn't that I was doing anything better, but the other players were getting tired and they would make an example. And of course, as someone who was just like any regular person on the team, you know, that gave me a sense of, of feeling like, Oh, I got acknowledged because of my hustle. And I think I've let that kind of bleed through throughout my adulthood and in business. And I even take it back to uh, one of the first businesses I started. Someone had told me, you know, I just, I don't, I don't think that's going to work. And it was a successful friend. I had a, a lot of confidence in who's very successful. And I said, you know what? It actually made me smile uh, because I, I love it when people doubt you. And I said, I'm going to show you, I'm, I'm going to prove to you. Yeah. And, you know, six, seven years later, still successful, still profitable, but that, that motivated me. And so um, it's really, it, it all goes back to, I can, I can put in the hustle. I can put in the work and the time. And I'm, I'm not afraid to do that. In fact, um, I, I love the hustle. So that, did, that's. Did, did you ever it, win a Mr. Mr. Hustle award at any like basketball camps or things like that? If there was one, I would have won it, but yeah. <laughs> no, I've never won one. And that's okay. I, I, I always said, you know, as a, as a kid, it was funny when I would go to these camps, I was never, you know, similar. I was never the most talented kid, but so I knew I was never going to win like the MVP award. So you just kind of, you gave up on that one. You knew, you knew that was going to go yeah. to the real talented kids. I'm like, but I'm focusing in on the Mr. Hustle award. Like if I can, <laughs> if I can win that one, that's, that's the one I'm going to win. Right. So that, cause it, it, you know, it was the thing that, you know, hustle doesn't take skill, right? H- hustle takes a mindset. Hustle takes an attitude. It really is an attitude. And that's why I go back to sports so often is because if you have the mindset of I can and I will, you will demonstrate the output, which is the effort to, to you know, get stronger, to get faster, or in the case of a fourth quarter, last play, to run faster than, than the opponent, the, the running back that you're trying to cover, whoever it might be. And um, I, love, I love bringing it back to, to the sports analogy. You bet. Yeah. So, I mean, I think, you know, one of the things that's most exciting to me about, you know, Hustle Nation and and starting this is, you know, getting to learn from others as well, right? Over time of, you know, how, how other people are hustling and how, you know, we can learn. I mean, certainly we don't have all the answers. I think, you know, we've, we've learned a lot over our career that we want to share, but at the same point, you know, getting others to share with us, you know, Hey, this is, this is how I hustle and this is how I embrace it. And this is the, you know, the behaviors I follow uh, to me is super exciting. Yeah. So let's switch gears a little bit. Let's talk about hustle in the workplace or whether you're a leader, you're an employee, you're an entrepreneur. um, What is hustle in the workplace and how do you define that to your team? Yeah. So to me, uh, you know, when I kind of break down hustle, you know, the, the, the hard work part and the unrelenting part are really the, the, the foundational things to me because uh, you know, the rest is, you know, basically being, you know, more efficient, you know, learning from others, being willing to take chances, enjoying everything. But, you know, at the end of the day, nothing really happens until you start to work hard. Right. And there's plenty of people that have tried to work hard, but then they give up too soon. And so to me, like at the very foundation of it is, you know, let's define even what hard work is. Right. So I I use the example of, you know, I could this afternoon, I could go, uh, you know, mow a farm field with one of the non-motorized push you know, cutting lawnmowers. And that would be hard work, right? I mean, it would be a tremendous workout. It would be hard work. But really, what have I accomplished, right? I mean, someone else is going to take a machine and they're going to do that in 20 minutes and I'm going to take six days probably to pull it off, right? So, you know, hard work isn't, you know, to me, it's it's really kind of three things, right? It's, you got to put the hours in, you know, what's your pace of play and then what is your prioritization? And so if, you know, step one, nothing good ever happened without putting the hours in. You know, everyone is talking today about, well, I had this shortcut and I'm going to, you know, in one hour a week, I'm going to change the world. And it's like, I've talked to a lot of successful people around the world. 
Never has anyone said like, yeah, I just kind of do this about an hour a week, give it a shot. No, these are drivers. These are people that wake up early, stay up late, grinding throughout the day, right? So, you know, you got to put the hours in. Your pace of play, you know, I, I use the example of a lot of times, you know, people show up to work and they, they, they're they there a long time, but they don't do anything while they're there. They're just kind of chit-chatting and, and you know, just kind of passing the day. And then the third thing is prioritization. You know, there's plenty of people that put the hours in, they're cranking all day, but the stuff they're working on just doesn't matter. You know, you're, you're focusing on the, you know, 80% of stuff that's going to do 20% of the results versus the 20% of things that are going to deliver 80% of the results. Right. So, you know, that's, that to me is really how we kind of start with just defining like, what is hard work? Are you putting in the time? What do you, you know, are you moving while you're putting in the time? And then what are you doing while you're there? that is going to really drive towards your goals. And then the unrelenting part, which we can, you know, we'll get into later. I mean, to me, that's the, that the core of it, it's just never giving up. Right. So many people, mm-hmm. they, they work really hard for a day. I, you know, my, uh, uh, you know, even my, my son once in a while, right. You know, he's a, a 13 year old kid, right. And we'll be having conversations and he's like, well, yeah, no, I worked really hard yesterday. I'm like, okay, that's great. That was a day, right? Like, you know, what <laughs> one day yeah. isn't going to cut it. Right. You got to, you got to build momentum day in and day out. And, and, you know, those that really hustle, they're cranking it, they're working hard, but they're never giving up, right? They're, they're relentless about how do we continue to move forward? Even when, you know, like, like you had mentioned your story, right? About, you know, somebody kind of doubting you and saying, that's a really easy time for a lot of people to give up, right? Here's a successful person that you respect, that you trust to just say, "Ah, I'm out of it. Right. Or I'm just tired and I don't think this is going to work. Well, that's fine. But, if you give up, then you, then you know, you failed. Right. And that never, that doesn't mean you can't pivot and learn and all that sort of stuff, but far too often people just, just give up way too soon. I I agree. And let's go back to the H, the hard work and hustle. It's interesting. We talk about essentially not picking all the low hanging fruit, which is what a (laughs) lot of people at work will come in and do. Now, the hard part about that is, you know, I, I used to do that very early in my career there was really never any sense of accomplishment. It always felt like my, my list of things got longer. But then, you know, I, I kind of worked my way up in, into a few different roles. And then I got to a point in my career where I was managing a small team of salespeople. And I came across one guy who was always trying to hit home runs. In fact, I mean, to the point to where it seemed like he was only going after the grand slams. And <laughs> we all know that in, in baseball, the batting average to be successful is 300, meaning... 30% hits would be deemed a very good player. And if you're 33 or 35%, you're considered all pro. So, you know what, I, I guess I'm curious when you get in those situations, we know that that's one end of the extreme and the other end of the extreme is picking the low hanging fruit. So we talk about how hard work, what, what is the best way to go about that? What, what do you find in your world? Yeah. So, I mean, really, you know, you're talking about the prioritization piece, right? Like where, where do you spend the time? And, you know, to me, what was, what's interesting is you see people in your organization and leaders as they're going through different shifts in their career, prioritization changes when all of a sudden they have too much on their plate than they can possibly get done in a day, right? If, if you have a a plate and you can get everything done and it really doesn't matter what order you get it done, prioritization isn't that big of a deal, right? The, and so when you have more on your plate and then frankly, you're, you're more results based, but all of a sudden someone's looking at you and saying, all right, I got to get the result. I, if you've ever seen the movie, the pursuit of happiness, you know, with, with Will Smith, right? So it, he's trying to manage all these life things. And he's trying to make this list of calls and no matter how hard he tried, he's gotten all these shortcuts to, you know, get his pace of play up, but he just can't get to the, the right people, right? Well, all of a sudden he jumps to the top of the list you know, goes to the, you know, this big uh, guy that was running a hedge fund and, and got to him, right? Well, that's, that's prioritization, right? Well, why, why are you working on all these little guys? You know, go, go focus on something that's going to move the needle. Now, to your point, there's a balance there, right? If all you're doing is, you know, focusing on the grand slams, you can wait a really long time before you get a hit, right? And so to me, that, that prioritization, it really is a balance to understand, uh, ultimately what your goals are, right? So like in, in, in the pursuit of happiness, you know, situation, basically he had to get to a certain number to basically get the job. Right. And when we look at business, 
we're all in different business cycles, right? So, um, and there might even be different mini business cycles within a business. So like I'll, I'll use, you know, our business, uh, you know, at, at McClone, you know, there's divisions, you know, we've started up over the last, you know, 10 years that, you know, if we would have, you know, put our, all our eggs in that basket and said, you know what, this is, we're just going to shift all into this. Well, guess what? We made mistakes for a long time, you know, building those divisions, really figuring out what the value was. And so if we would have looked for a grand slam and went all in on that, you know, we could have screwed up the whole company, you know, but at the same point, you know, realizing that there was a, a significant need that our clients needed, well, let's, let's solve for it, right? Let's learn how to solve for it. And, you know, I ended up taking about like a, a one division for us. It was a HR division for us. It took us about four or five years to kind of stub our toe and kind of figure it out. Well, now over the last five years, now it's scaling. Well, why is that happening? It's scaling because we, we've learned and we've prioritized along the way about, okay, it is a priority, but it's not our top priority. We have to grow the the mothership, you know, in the process as well. Um, also, it sounds like a lot of unrelenting, which for, for those listening, yeah. the definition of unrelenting, according to the Merriman Webster website, is not softening or yielding in determination. Second is not letting up or weakening in vigor or pace. Uh, a great example of exactly that. You match hard work with unrelenting, and that's when you start to generate success. I Correct. I love it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So it's, it's, I mean, the prioritization balance is so hard, but the, the number one thing I've shared with people, prioritization, it's really hard to prioritize if you don't know what your short and long-term goals are, right? Cause then what are you prioritizing? So you, you have, you have to look at it from a standpoint of, well, this is important because this is my, this is my goal, both short-term and long-term. If I want to be a, you know, super fit, you know, uh, leader in health and wellness and fitness and all that sort of stuff. Okay. Well, if that's a long-term goal, there's a lot of short-term goals I got to hit in order for that to happen. And yeah. guess what? In order for that to happen, I have to prioritize that as my day in my life, right? That, that it's an important thing for me to do. And the, so the same thing with business, right? And, you know, not just your job as a whole, but within your day, what are the things that are most important that are going to be the biggest needle movers? If you don't have that clarity, prioritization is really just what you're telling yourself versus really leading to your goals. Dustin, I think, but the, the problem with all of that is um, a lot of leaders and businesses do not have a goal or a strategic plan of any sort. So I've done a lot of public speaking in my day, primarily around digital marketing. And when I do seminars uh, specifically about just social media, digital marketing, one of the first questions I ask is, show of hands, how many people in the room have a strategy? And you'll see maybe 20%. I've seen as low as 5%. And then I'll say, okay, that's good. Thanks to those who raised their hand. But how many of you actually have it in a document form? And then you see a bunch of these. So I've had instances where zero people in the room have a marketing strategy. Now you'll get a few people like, well, you know, in my head, I want to do this and that. I say, well, is that a plan or is that a hope? Because ultimately, just as we have, you know, life aspirations, um, I might tell you tomorrow I've got a different plan for I want to retire in 10 years. And I might tell you in five years, I want to retire in five years. And so sure. unless you have it in a document, it, it, it's subject to change. It's like, well, this is what I want for Christmas today. And so I just, I think it's so important that businesses have a strategy, even Absolutely. if you only look at it once or twice a year, like you said, everybody needs a North star. Everybody needs an accountability buddy. You have to have direction and without a strategy of some sort, even if it's a one page document, which yeah. I think we'd both agree would be sufficient yeah. for the small businesses, for new leaders, et cetera. You, you got to have that direction and it can't just be, well, I've got it right here. Uh, that absolutely that I've, we, I've seen firsthand failing at that. It, it doesn't work and it's not effective. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's like having hustle in your head, right? If you, if, if it's just in your head, you can't communicate, you can't get other people to buy into it. You can't get other people to challenge it. And to your point, we lie to ourselves, right? We'll, we'll change it in our head seven times and think we've never changed it. Yeah, we're we're really good at that, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, it's it's hustle's an interesting thing, but 
when I, I think we put this definition of H-U-S-T-L-E together for people over the course of the next few episodes, I think it'll start to click and um, hopefully people can start to demonstrate new behaviors at work and they can start to see different outcomes, not only for themselves, but also for their team. And I think the, the demonstrating part of it, once you understand it and you can see the value uh, and you demonstrate it, then not only will one person be actively hustling, but you'll have a team of people that have the hustle mindset. How great would that be, Dustin, if you not only had a team, but you have a culture and now customers or clients who embrace that culture. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the ultimate kumbaya. And those that love hustle want to be surrounded by other people with hustle, right? I mean, this is you know ultimately how you and I connected, right? I mean, the the idea being is you want to be more surrounded by it once you've bought into it. Well, think about your friends, and this is a kind of more rhetorical question, but think in your mind of five, ten people, however many it is. Um, who are the people you enjoy spending the most amount of time with? I would venture to say that those are the people that are demonstrate a couple things. They're successful. uh, They have a great attitude. So either they're fun, they're funny, they're spontaneous, like to do stuff. Well, those are the people you're going to want to spend your time with because it's kind of contagious, right? Everybody, regardless of what level you're at in life, we want to surround ourselves with better people. And so I, I think it's the same way with the hustle mindset. Um, you want to surround yourself on the football or basketball team or whatever sport you play with the people who are the hardest working, who get after it because um, you want to be like that. You want that outcome. And you know, we all know that if we had a whole team of people that have that hustle, that hustle mindset in this case, boy, we could really be something special, whether that be in the business world or in the sports world or coaching youth sports. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. I'll be working on that this weekend as I coach youth soccer. Final final game of the season. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else do we have um, in defining hustle as we get closer to wrapping up this episode? Yeah. So, I mean, I think, you know, when we look at hustle beyond defining it and finding ways to spread it, you know, we talked a little bit about um eliciting yourself and then surrounding yourself by it. Right. So, you know, to me, what, what I look forward to in, you know, future episodes is uh, beyond us, you know, just learning from each other is uh, you know, the more we're all surrounded by it each day, you're a little bit more inspired to do a little bit more and you start to define things a little bit differently, you know, so you know, even hard work, right? Like I remember as a kid, uh, you know, I went to a very small school and you know, how I defined that was my own definition. And, you know, we have, you know, definitions of what hustle stands for today. Right. But, you know, the reality is, is there are so many different versions of it. Uh, You know, the more we can learn from each other, we're all going to get better. Yeah, uh, absolutely. We're going to talk a lot about hustle in the future, defining what the acronym stands for. Uh, In the future, you can expect a lot of fantastic guests from us. We're going to talk about their success story and what hustle means to them. I'm really excited about that. And uh, I appreciate each and every one of you for listening or watching. Uh, I hope that you'll subscribe, uh, share the content with your friends, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for listening. Thank you for being part of the Hustle Nation. If you're serious about raising the bar in your personal and professional life and willing to go all in on your success, head over to hustleleaders.com. Here you can get access to our Hustle Productivity ebook, attend our Hustle Masterclass, or challenge yourself to the 30-Day Hustle Challenge. Pairing these tools and training with the Hustle Nation podcast will help you advance to a whole new level. Until next time, stay hungry and inspire those around you to hustle.